the show where there are no penalties, nothing is offside, and everything is fair game. This is The Gloves Are Off. All right, welcome to this week's edition of The Gloves Are Off. I'm Moses Wooldoo. We have great topics to talk about, and of course, we have to introduce our guests. Of course, my, of course I have to say, my co-host, Greg Buchanan, the host of uh, The Voice of the CPCA. How are you? Not too bad, Moses. Excellent. And uh, Aaron Rollick, our guest for this week. <laughs> you are the athletic supervisor of Lakeland College. Sports is getting ready and gearing up out there. It must be exciting for you guys out there. It's, uh, it's a busy time of year, and it's an exciting time of year, so we're, we're off and running. All right, well, you know what, let's get the show off and running. And we'll start off with the Banjo Bowl. Uh, probably one of the most, uh, well, head scratchers, I'll have to say, in terms of calls by a coach, uh, deciding to go for the punt, at least the coffin corner punt, rather than the field goal that you give your team a four-point lead with 35 seconds to go. Now, a question for you is, like, what play cost the Bombers that loss on Sunday? Was it the field goal or lack of a field goal, or was it the uh, penalties that happened beforehand? Oh, I think it was a combination of everything. You know, you hate to be a Winnipeg sports fan right now. You finally get the Jets back. They're going to be locked out in a week. And then you have the Blue Bombers, who went to the Grey Cup last year and now are horrible this year. And the general manager just gave away the farm and so many players. Uh, you know, it's sad to see, but I, what was he doing? Like, why wouldn't he kick a field goal? And it, it just, yeah, boggles my mind. If you were a coach in that situation, like, it, it, it seems to be one of those things that you say, okay, this has got to be automatic. You go for the field goal. You're up by four points. They got to go a touchdown, but no. They decided to go for that coffin corner. Would you have said this is ballistic? This has got to be insane? I, it's, it's insanity. I mean, you have to take the points. Anytime you can get a chance to get points, you, you've got to take them, especially when it's going to extend a lead and force them to do a touchdown. To me, it was pure stupidity. I mean, you know, they, they rag on the old coach, you know, La Police, they got rid of him for making dumb decisions while I mean who's going to be next that obviously that 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 whole group has a has a real problem right now and and I get a kick out of it I mean I'm an Eskimos fan and I giggle and laugh the way everybody from Swaggerville paraded around last year like they uh, they created football and they were the greatest thing going and you know what the football gods are are striking back it's karma karma is coming back in Winnipeg but the thing is too when you look at it if he kicks a field goal misses it we know what happens when you kick a long field goal and you miss it could be a big return but you know what they had the wind it would have sailed through 43 yards is more than enough in terms of polarity's range it would have been the worst case scenario would have been a single point in my opinion yeah. but it's got to be one of those things where you have to say you got to go for the points I agree with that but let's talk about the Saskatchewan Rough Riders in this aspect um, a lot of people just talk about what happened to Tim Burke and the situation with the Bombers. Now the Riders have won two in a row. Is this just, hey, you know what, it is Winnipeg, they're not that great of a team? Or uh, do you feel that the Riders, hey, they're building momentum here? Well, it's two in a row. I mean, whether it's Winnipeg, whoever it is, you've still won two in a row. They've got to have some momentum. The guys in the locker room have to be feeling good about themselves. And, and now it's just a wait and see how they come out next week and, and whether they're going to build off it. I mean, yeah, they, they beat a poor team twice. but. Uh, you know, a, a win's a win, and they've got two in a row, and that's something that a lot of the teams in the CFL can't say right now. You know, when they've had good games out of, the, you know, actually in that Sunday game, Saunders played incredible. I thought he was a real, you know, what he came out of the backfield, made some big catches as well, and their running game looked a lot better than it has in the last number of weeks. Now they go to Montreal. We'll see what they have there. Hopefully Durant's going to be healthy and ready to go. Same with Dressler. Well, they say that uh, Durant will be playing regardless of how uh, the, his condition is with that hip flexor. Let's move on to the lockout, and this has been a big thing, especially the last 24 hours. Saturday at midnight Eastern is when they're going to officially lock out if they don't come up with a deal. Apparently, both in Quebec and in Alberta, they've come up with uh, certain labor laws and issues to kind of get that down. But the way things are going at this rate with the Players Association and the NHL, is a lockout imminent? I think it absolutely it is. Um, you haven't heard about progress. You haven't heard about, you know, we're getting close. You, you haven't heard those comments, and I think it's, it's bound to happen. I think the, the owners are prepared for it, and I think the players now are preparing themselves. Uh, you know, guys will have things set up. They'll be going overseas. They'll be going to the AHL, whatever it may be. But, uh, you know, we may not see NHL hockey till Christmas time. You know, they're not even talking about Saturday's deadline. They're talking about how long this lockout's going to be. Is it going to be until the end of November, December, January? It's going to be an entire season. And so they're not even talking about trying to get that deadline 
and trying to get a deal done before Saturday. They're talking about how long it's going to be. So, yeah, it's going to happen. Yeah, it's, it's sad, too, especially when you had guys who were predicting this months beforehand. For example, Trevor Linden, who said in Vancouver Radio a couple months ago, saying, you know what, looks like we won't have actual NHL hockey until about December, like you just mentioned. But uh, w is there pressure at all to get a deal done? It doesn't seem like it the way that both parties are kind of acting, but if you think what's happening right now with the Labor Board, you have both the Alberta Labor Board getting into this. They're supposed to be meeting uh, today. That got nixed late last night by the NHL. Bill Daly put out an email saying, hey, you know what, what is the NHL doing? They wanted to have something done, and now they're backing out. I is there any pressure at all? Like, or are they just saying, you know what, let's try to figure this out in October? You well, get that feeling, yeah. You do, and, and what's inconceivable to me is, is strictly from looking at it, you know, in the United States where they're struggling for TV deals, they're struggling for fans, they're struggling for owners of teams down in the U.S., and they don't seem to be in a big hurry to keep their product going, uh, especially down in those markets. If they're not playing, they're going to disappear. If they think they're going to come back at Christmas like the NBA did and be the number one game in town. They're sadly mistaken. They're barely fourth now in most markets. They'll be lucky to, to retain fifth, sixth, seventh in, in some of these markets when they do come back. And that's what concerns me the most, especially these smaller markets in the U.S. where these teams will, will just fall off the radar and they, they won't even be on the back page of the sports anymore. They're going to be you know, down by the obituary. What's actually even worse, too, is, for example, the New York Rangers potentially losing $160 million uh, in revenue, and they were one of the most profitable teams. But let's move on to Quebec, and I want to talk about this. Um, with the new premier that was just uh, elected last week, um, now there's talks uh, and fears that there might not be an arena for them because the money has to be allocated somewhere else. And uh, I want to talk to you guys in terms of reading that Montreal Gazette article. Do you feel that uh, with the new premier and the way situations are happening, minus, of course, the NHL lockout and the whole CBA thing, uh, does it look like it's slim to none in terms of the Quebec City getting an NHL franchise anytime soon? I don't think it's a very good chance at all right now. Uh of course, with the NHL lockout, like you said, it, that's going to determine a lot. But with a new premier on board, she's going to want to put her stamp on the province and be interesting to see if she says no to the arena, uh, how exactly the province is going to react to her. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I mean, they're, they're not, that's not, can't be a priority of the new government there. I mean, with, with half of their post-secondary students losing their minds over tuition increases, I mean, she's got a lot of other things that they're going to have to deal with before worrying about building an arena to try and attract an NHL team. Uh, I think it's gonna really going to fall down quite far on the priority list and, and it may not resurface again for another you know, 18, 24 months. Well, it seems like Quebec hockey fans are going to have to wait uh, maybe another decade in order to get this whole talk coming back up. All right, in the meantime, we're going to take a quick commercial break. We'll be back with more Gloves Are Off.